Salutations and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Let Dark Souls Teach You. Last night we conquered the amazing city of Anarlando and now the game is really opening up because there are several places we can go and the order does not matter. That is the beautiful part about this game is that a lot of the meat and potatoes of it does not matter the order you tackle, you can choose which way or another. We, however, have an objective and we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Alright, so we have to warp to Anarlando. Remember last time we talked about... There were three different yellow doors that had said, um, sealed by the Great Lord's power. Well, remember that one that we saw in Anor Londo? That's the one we're going to go for. And that place will actually lead us to that place way up there. Yes, in Dark Souls. If you can see it, you can almost definitely go to it. Not going to lie, the place we're going to is one of the, well, again, not anymore because I can handle most things in the game now with relative ease. But in my first playthrough, the area we're going to was... One of the most rage inducing for me. I mean, I got through it, of course, but it's still, it was an effort. Like, it was really an effort. And a lot of the, like, um, the late game era, like, not the end game, like, the end game is great. And the mid game that we just did was great. But the areas before then, a lot of them can be a bit rage inducing, but they all teach you something. So, you know, this one I feel like is the, probably the most balanced and the most finished of those areas. So we're, get, we're just going to start there, and it, because it's convenient, it's close to Anor Londo, it's the door that we saw. You know, we're going to we're gonna start here and we're going to have some fun in here. Obviously, you're going to have to learn to adapt in this situation where you're in a long, narrow corridor with charging pigs, but with them being present, you cannot light that bonfire. You're out in the open with charging boars. What do you do? You, f you find a secure position. Find a position where they can't get to you. And this is going to be a lot... Oh! I forgot how much damage lightning does to some mobs. I was going to say this is going to be a long and tedious process, but hey, I guess not. With a regular weapon, this would take forever. Sometimes they drop a helm that I never use, but looks cool. Yeah, Fang Boar Helm. It looks ridiculous, so I don't wear it, but... <laughs> Fashion souls to each their own. All right, make sure you grab that bonfire, because if you die, it's all the way back to Anarlando. Alright, so right away we get off the elevator. We got friends coming for us. Now, these guys don't take as much damage as they you know, maybe think you should, but because they're made of crystal, and they have crystal weapons, they do a lot of damage. Yeah, crystal weapons you'll find, when you use them, they're not very sturdy, like they break pretty quickly before you repair them, but they do a lot of damage. So they're good for like, you know, speed running and for burst damage, but these guys can be parried, which is the saving grace to making most mobs easier to stomach. Get parried, son. Now that crystal golem over there, He's pretty passive, he's not going to attack us unless we get really close or attack him. But we are going to need him, so take note of him. We'll be coming back to him later. Alright, this area is going to pit. These channelers are so annoying, those spellcasters. Yeah. I know what I'm doing is what I call the speed run, not the speed run strat, but the bitch strat, which is run past everything, backstab what you can, and then keep running. You'll notice that you have a few different staircases you can go to. Obviously you're going to start on one side and go to the other. You want to explore as much as you can. Always being mindful of whatever could be behind you. There's a treasure chest over here. The chain is pointing backwards as it should be. Twinkling Titanite. This is good for some weapons. Leave me alone. Come to the other side and you see, hey look, an elevator. But we're not going to go there just yet. We're going to explore this other little side over here. See if there's anything nice we can get. Also been trying something new. Uh, since I tend to record these like at night, uh, there's never any natural lighting, so I'm trying maybe t having some, you know, some light lights on. I'm not usually one to have, like, lights on. I don't like the way it makes me look. I think it's, you know, too bright and annoying, but whatever. We'll try something. If it doesn't work, I'll, you know, go back to a bit of a darker layout. But I don't want to look like some edgy fuck emerging from the shadows, you know. Whatever. We'll try something. All right, definitely keep distance if you have a spear, if you can, because you have the advantage of keeping them at a distance. Even if they block it, you know, it'll still stagger them for a second. And then you'll have the advantage. Wait for them to attack. Lean forward. That lunge has silly range. But you have to be somewhat accurate with it. Like you saw there. Uh-oh. Forward pointing chain. Ah, lingering hitboxes are fun. I'm over here. No! Thought it was going to suck me in. I Poke. There we go. Crystal Knight shields. 100% physical reduction, damage reduction, and very good stability, but its durability is only 20, which really is pretty shite for a shield, but there you go. 
All right, I like to leave some things, you know, to surprise the player. Uh, I, I very much like when games, you know, throw the player off guard. But there's one thing up here that I'm not a huge fan of. Um, it's it's almost like a mandatory death. And if you don't know about it, it can result in potentially a decent lo loss of souls. So what I've done is actually equipped a ring that we got earlier in the game. It's a ring of sacrifice, which basically makes it so that when you die, you don't lose any of the souls that you gained while you were alive in that in that cycle. If this guy would stop turtling, that would be really, really nice. Remember that, remember that extremely early game lesson with the rat in the sewer tunnel? Same thing applies here. Only this guy can parry and break your guard. This guy attacks so slow. Thank you. 3k souls from him. So yeah, here's that ring I got. Ring, rare ring of sacrifice. Die, lose nothing. Nullifies curse, which is a, a way this guy can kill you up here. And even after you die, I don't know if it's a bug or if it's intended. If his ability is still going off after you die, you can get cursed even though you're already dead. Which I think is pretty cheap to be honest, but whatever. This is one little thing I will, you know... I don't mind like, oh, you're ruining my discovery, bro. No, trust me. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. You want to be prepared for this. Because as you can see, there's no way of getting to this guy. So, I'm gonna... No fancy schmancy lesson with this today. I'm just gonna let myself die because honestly, that's what you're supposed to do. Normally, I would say, let the game teach you that you're supposed to die and be ready to have a ring. That can save your life. No, this is extremely frustrating, and I think it's a little bit silly. So this is one thing I'm going to say, no, belay that mindset. And I just uh, did you a little favor there. As you can see, we spawn to a new area. If the game is spawning you to a new area, don't be alarmed. It's supposed to happen. We have a snoozing snack outside the door here, but I have a spear. So look at that. Drops our key. Usually cutscenes mean something reasonably important. He pulls the lever, creepy siren call comes out, and Cthulhu, nah, uh, Cthulhu things emerge. Yeah, I don't like these guys. They also have a grab attack, and you don't want to get hit by that because it freaking hurts. They are coming in hot, and they, I forget how far they can jump. Ouch. Like I just said, yeah, that, that feels good, doesn't it? At least they die in a couple hits, and they're usually staggered. Come at me, bruh. Well, not a bruh. Not a lady. I mean, lore-wise, they were once ladies, captured by the area's boss for experimentation. But, uh, I, I don't think that monster really has a gender. I suppose you could say what it was is what it now is, but then that starts a whole other argument that I'm not gonna get into. Alright, so as we saw, that guy pulled a lever. And that's what caused these little octopus lays to go cuckoo. So we see a ladder where I was going to climb up it. Hopefully it'll take us to that platform we saw in the cutscene where we can get to the bottom of things. Yep, there's the conch shell or whatever the frickety frack. Ow! Please no. Please no. Please no. Please no. All right, getting ganked by two melee and a caster, but there are pillars here for crowd control. See, I'm not using hard crowd control. I'm using what I call soft crowd control. And the way I define soft crowd control is just running around like a maniac. Which, but you have to do that sometimes. But, yeah, it's not always the most effective. Okay, we just... out. please, no. Please! Stagger City, bitch. See, I knew I shouldn't have picked it up, because when you pick it up... You can't do anything for like a second. Yeah. Rest in peace, 34k. So, and we're jerky again now. But we actually, we got what we came here for. Or what we went to that little area for. We went to that little area to retrieve the the archive. The, um, the key. We need the key to get out of here. And down there is just a dead end. So, we're going to go up of here. Look at this. Vast, this area is just massive. I love its, its layout. You know, you can just... Like, you, you're in certain rooms and it goes around. Some of those you can get to, some of those you can't. It's one of them you were actually in. But like, yeah, this is that. This is the dome. This is the ceiling of that place we were overlooking before. It's fucking enormous. The scale of some of these areas really is incredible. And some of the best aged parts of this game is just the scale and the grandeur of it all. Environmental awareness, don't get ambushed. Alright, now this is what really got me salty my first time. 
is you're going to have casters on your level and above you. And you need to find out how to get out of here. And that's what we get for not clearing our surroundings and just running through everything. Still learning lessons to this day. And this dickhead who was mocking us last time. Die. But once he starts his teleport animation, you can't hit him. Which is really annoying. But, conveniently, he landed right there. You can take your revenge. But keep moving. The reason I had to get rid of the shield was because my equip load, I was too heavy if I was wearing any armor. Even this light robe. So... That's alright, we'll be fine. The so number you'll notice is these staircases all have a handle that you can turn. And they'll switch around so you'll be able to get onto different parts of the floor. As you can imagine, that took myself, as well as a handful of new players, quite some time to figure out. And it got frustrating because these guys are ganky, spammy, they hit hard. You know, those casters are really annoying if you don't kill them before they teleport. But this is the first lever that we see, so we're going to turn it. Alright, we're on a new floor up here. Let's see what we got to do here. Alright, low health, getting shot at, use the environment. Alright, let's assess for a moment. That's a bright open door that we've not been through yet, so that looks promising. But we can't immediately get to it. Well, if we turn the handle down there, then we'll be able to get to it. Do a nice little roll, but be careful, as I just did, I was not. And you have iframes, you know, invincibility frames while you're interacting with objects in this game, so don't fear that. Stay on the move, or else he can shoot you. Alright, now we are at that elusive doorway. Don't bother with him. Just get to the ladder and run. Slide it. Every now and again with DS Fix installed, if you slide down a ladder, it'll like blast you through the world. Fun fact. All right, we see a lever. We're obviously gonna push it. And what happens? It opens up a magical bookcase. I don't know how that hit me from there, but whatever. And we come to this open room. And we have a beautiful bonfire. Believe me, I was thrilled, thrilled. When I found this, because this area was the bane of my existence. Along with several others, this is by no means the only one. We have a few rooms we can go into here. Let's start with this one. Got some treasures. Blue Titanite, that's for upgrading magic weapons, which we obviously don't have right now. And this room with much treasure. A forward pointing chain that denotes a mimic. And a decently open area to fight him in. Alright, what's he got for us? Enchanted Falchion. It's just a regular curved sword with some magic buff on it. Alright, we have now loaded into a new zone. Let's see what is in store for us now. We got lots of these crystal bastards hanging around. And that guy we fought earlier who had to kill us. He was also a big crystal dude. But he was like a massive one. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to head into the big pit O crystal. If you want to explore this area and get some items, you can go right ahead. There's definitely some stuff here possibly worth having. But you and me, we're going to descend into the Crystal Cave. Yeah, this should be a little premonition right here. Big guy, narrow spacing. You're going to see a lot of that down here. Dealing with it, in my opinion, isn't too hard anymore. You just got to, you know, dodge at the proper time, move properly. But this right here. There's stuff falling from the ceiling and landing. But there's no bridge here. Surely if it's landing on something. There you go. Have an invisible bridge. And it led you to a humanity. Your intuition has rewarded you once again. Are we stuck? Oh, no, we're not stuck. I thought we just got stuck. Alright. That's a butterfly. That's a moonlight butterfly. We fought that, you know, not too long ago. But in a later game area, it's probably going to kick our ass. And it has the advantage of, I wouldn't say the high ground, but we're, we're just not going to mess with it. We got more floating landing things here. And a message that's out in the open. See, that's a developer, that's a developer message. Path ahead. There you go. Alright, now this fucker who's stolen quite a few of my souls in the past. You don't have a lot of space, but you have some. Roll four at the right time. Simply walk around him. You do not need to deal with that because he hits like a freight train. Drop back down to here where you see the landing stuff. You can go and get that item down there and deal with that guy. Or you can do like I do and keep going. Just follow the bridge. I wouldn't try to stray from like the straight path. 
for obvious reasons, but just carry on straight, and there you go. Again, this is probably the least rage-inducing of the mid-late game areas, but it's definitely hard to handle your first time. It was for me anyway. Yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. This is probably going to be a shorter episode, which is fine. You know, I don't... I think if I tackle another area in this episode, it'll just be long. So I'm going to keep this one short just by doing this quick little area. Well, I say quick. It's quick for me now, but it's probably going to take a first-time player a lot longer. And cutscene usually herald in, heralds in something fairly important. We seem to have an important crystal. And as we approach that important crystal... This guy, who I'm not entirely sure how he can fly. He has wings, but I don't know. Whatever. He's not happy that we found his crystal. So, what should we do with his precious crystal if he wants to kill us? Well, watch this. If we attack him... Oh, crap. Oh, and as you can see... Since the fog wall wasn't loaded in yet, those little man-eater shells followed us in here. Yeah, I usually have that in the back of my mind, but this time I wasn't thinking about it. Alright, now we know what we're up against. We're going to use two humanities, we're going to reverse hollowing, and reinforce our Estus Flask. No, not reinforce. Kindle. Come on, wake up. We're going to kindle the bonfire, and we're going to go boss time. But what I showed you there is I hit the boss, and his health bar went down for like the briefest second. And then it went back up to full. There's a reason he was protecting that crystal. It's actually the key to destroying him. If you destroy that crystal, you can actually damage him. Alright, we can go Shirtless Wonder again. We do not have any Purging Stones. Purging Stones would reverse, you know, the curse or heal the curse. But we don't want to get cursed. Because if you get cursed, it instantly kills you. And when you resurrect, you only have half your health. And that remains until you get a Purging Stone. Which are only sold by a couple of vendors. And none of them are anywhere near here. So, yeah, don't get cursed. There's a few parts, there's a few areas in the game where you can get cursed. You don't want to get cursed. Just saying. Alright, these fuckers, they hit really hard. And they, they can kill you in like two hits. And if they just chain hit you and swarm you, you're fucked. So now that the fog door is loaded in, they're not going to be able to follow us. So, thank God for that. Alright. So you don't, you don't have a ton of space. This guy fills up most of the room. So what you're going to want to do is keep that in mind. But first, before we do anything, we have to destroy his precious little sparkly thing. Kerp! And he's not too happy about that. We're gonna go in. Go in for some big damage. Fun fact, he's actually blind. So, when he attacks us, it's like a rough estimate of where we are. And it's pretty close. It's not direct- none of his attacks are directly hitting us. But... It's like an estimate. I mean, if you stand in that, you'll get residual damage. And this will wreck your frame rate. The crystals popping up from that attack will wreck your frame rate. Although, like a lot of bosses that you can get close to and wail on, be ready, because he might have an attack that's ready to force us off. We gotta be prepared for that. So keep an eye out. I know you're kind of looking at a belly button this entire time, but if you're close to him, there you go. He's charging up something really big. That's when you run like Al. And you can still take little, like, trickling damage from those little crystals. And a little bit of curse buildup. We have zero curse resistance right now. So you really can't afford to take much. He's relatively simple, but if you get caught out by any of his mechanics, they are extremely... That's, that's how you offset a mechanically simple boss, is you make his mechanics really punishing. Which is fine. You know... You know, if you fail a simple mechanic, you should be punished. If you fail any mechanic, you should be punished. But I think the simpler the mechanic the more intense the punishment should not always, but usually be. Because it kind of teaches you, like, hey, you really shouldn't be dying to this. Getting blocked by the camera here. Is he charging up his big attack? Nope. He is slamming his tentacles. He has two attacks that can force you off of him. And when he's slamming his tentacles around, they hit, like, monster trucks. Do not get smacked by them. See, it's not a fun view, but when you're attacking him in the middle, always angle your camera up so you'll be able to see if he's charging that massive AoE. And as you can see, I ran for days and just avoided it. So you really need to be ready for that. Don't waste all your stamina if you can help it. Like I'm doing right now, being a very poor example. We should be able to finish him here. There we go. 
See, the boss earlier in the game, Quelag, was actually very helpful for this boss. Quelag was a boss that really taught you not to stay in close. And the Asylum Demon as well, the very first boss kind of taught you that. But Quelag was a more challenging boss that really stressed the importance of not going ham. Even though you have a lot of windows to go ham on the boss, they can really punish you for doing so. In this case, a massive AoE that will destroy you. But as you can see, we're rewarded with the bonfire. And we have a lot of points now we can use to level up. As we always do at the end of a big task, we're going to go back to Firelink Shrine. Now that we have the Firelink Altar, you know, that area, there's that Lord Vessel. That Lord Vessel requires Lord Souls, so we have to go to that Lord Vessel in order to feed it the Lord Souls. In order for something fun to happen. Alright, this fucker sometimes falls asleep, but you can just roll right down. You can hit him once to wake him up, but don't hit him again after that because he'll get pissed and leave. Alright, you go to the Firelink Altar, offer souls to Lord Vessel. And you can gather all the Lord Souls and then do this, or do them one at a time, doesn't matter. But as you can see, the flame is now stronger. Just to show you a bit of progress. We're going to warp back up to Firelink Shrine, because we are done with this episode. Uh, this is probably a really short episode, and not the most interesting one. But I want to... Each area of the game, like each of these like nearing the end game areas, teaches you something different. And this one was probably the shortest one. But I don't want to do too many at once, because it'll just drag out the episode. I don't want to do that. But yeah, we're going to end this episode like we ended last episode, right alongside our proud Onion Knights. And hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Let Dark Souls Teach You. Next time we're going to go to... Ah, which one am I going to go to next? We'll, we'll do the one that everyone hates the most next. We'll get that out of the way. Alright, until you guys see me again, live well. Thank you.